Hi, welcome to Patterns and Podcasts for Knitters. This is a new YouTube channel. I posted a short video a few days ago that was kind of an introduction to it. If you didn't see it, I can give you the Cliff Notes version. This is a channel where knitters and crocheters, I am among you, can learn about different podcasts, new podcasts, very well established podcasts, but mostly podcasts that are featuring finished objects. Sometimes we can run, or I will run some episodes that are strictly inspiration on patterns and ideas and yarn. But if you're like me, I am so grateful for these wonderful, amazing podcasters. Over the past couple of years, I've really upped my knitting and crocheting game. You know, I learned to crochet when I was around six years old, my mom taught me. And when I was 10, my girlfriends and I used to go to a yarn shop in Chicago on near diversity in Austin. I remember it like it was yesterday. And I learned to knit, but I never really got beyond being kind of a kid knitter until a couple of years ago when I discovered the amazing, rich availability of information on YouTube. So my whole purpose here, and I don't work for YouTube or Google, I'm not promoting anything like that. Um, my whole purpose here is to share episodes with you and kind of introduce you to um, podcasts that you may never have seen. Um, so that's about it. I'm sure I'll think of more as we go through this. I'm not going to play the videos. I'm just going to give you the highlights. And um, most important is the information so you can get directly to a podcast that might be helpful to you if you're looking for a particular pattern or some kind of a technique, a tutorial that you're really searching for, things like that. So anyway, let's get started. So today we're going to cover eight uh, different podcasters who are featuring hand knit sweaters as finished objects. And also I did find a really um, interesting video on Fair Isle Knitting, an amazing uh, resource for an amazing number of tutorials for knitters. So. Um, Again, these are, some are brand new, some have been around a while, but each of these episodes is featuring um, a pullover sweater that they are featuring as a finished object. Sometimes I will include the whips, the episodes that where they had cast on these uh, different sweaters if they're available, um, but uh, they all do have the finished objects and hopefully that'll be helpful to you. So first up is actually a tutorial. This is Ashley Lillis. She has been on YouTube for a number of years and she has a really excellent episode on how to knit your first sweater. Um, she also refers to it as a fun knit for experienced knitters. Um, I guess you could, it might be a good um, way to use up some of the yarn you have, you know, stash busting to some degree. But um, this is her Knit a Chunky Sweater episode where she gives you step-by-step -step instructions from cast on to blocking. She's very, very good. Goes through the construction, how to weave in the ends, you know, all of the things that um, most of us, you know, know how to do, but some of us could really use some pointers on. Um, the sweater is knit in the round bottom up and um, I'll show you a couple of pictures of some of the close-up work she's able to show people and what a good instructor she is. So as you can see, her camera work is really exceptional. Um, she obviously, you know, using a bulky yarn and bigger needles, it's easier to show the stitches to somebody who's never done a sweater before, or made a sweater before. Um, and it is a free pattern. She has a website. It's ashleylillis.com slash blog. So you can go there, download the written pattern, and then um, have Ashley kind of walk you through uh, the whole process. She really is an excellent teacher. And 
I believe that's the only type of video that Ashley Lillis does. They're always tutorials. Pop back on here. I'll pop back on here to help you figure out how to get to this episode. Obviously, using the search engine is the best thing. Not all of the podcasters use episode numbers. So if you just type in most of the uh, title of the episode, you'll get right to it. And I'm not sure you're aware, but a really easy way, and let me see if I can use my little pencil thing here. Um, I wasn't aware for quite a while, but if you click on, I'm circling it in yellow. If you click on the name of the podcast, um, it will take you to the channel pages. And in the channel page, you can see all of the videos that this podcaster has presented. And if you click on the title of the podcast, you know, anything up around the title, then it will open up all of the show notes that they are always referring to. You know, that was going on for quite a while and I kept searching, where are these show notes? Well, that's where they are. Click on the title for the show notes or click on the name to get to the channel information. So anyway, this is Ashley Lillis, excellent tutorials for knitters. I think she might do crocheters, I'm not sure, but definitely knitters. Um, and she has been on YouTube since 2013. Uh, as you can see, she's had over a million views and she does have a website, ashleylillis.com to go download that pattern. So. That's Ashley Lillis. Next is Andrea Mowry, and she has got to be the cutest podcaster in the world. She is adorable. She is talented. She uh, is a designer, and she also does amazing tutorials. But in this episode of her um, podcast, she is showing you the stone crop pullover. She doesn't talk about it a lot in this episode. She is the designer, but it's a good introduction to her if you've never uh, watched her podcast before. She calls her podcast, I'll Knit and Spin If I Want To. And she lives in Minnesota and she podcasts from her workroom or her studio in her home. Sometimes you can hear her son in the background. Sometimes her hubby stops by. She's so friendly and so cute, um, but also so knowledgeable. I like hearing her talk about the design process. She usually does talk about something she's working on. But in this case, if you haven't seen the stone crop pullover, it's really popular um, design. Um, this is an awesome, awesome sweater. And um, one that you should know about. Like many knitwear designers, <clears throat> Andrea Mowry does her own modeling. She models, um, I think, just about everything that she designs. She's such a pretty girl. But um, <clears throat> this one in particular is a beautiful combination of texture and color. It has bobble stitch um, uh, rows throughout the body and the sleeves, which obviously gives a really interesting texture. Uh, it's, I believe it's only knit in two colors. We can look at the pattern in a minute, but I think it's only two, two yarns, yarn colors. It looks like the colorway on this though has three. I don't know, maybe it's the computer, who knows. What's really fun is that on Fridays, and she's really consistent about this, it seems like every Friday, Andrea Mowry does a Q&A episode and she invites her followers to submit questions and she answers them and she even types up little additional information and puts it in the show notes. So um, I'd say she's, she's so knowledgeable and um, really, really helpful if you get into watching her podcasts. So here's the pattern information. Uh, Andrea Mowry has a really, really excellent website. It's Drea Renee Knits. Her patterns are also available on Ravelry, but I would suggest you go to her website because 
you'll see all of her designs there. The Stonecraft Pullover has been around since 2019, so it's not brand new, but so many of us who are new to knitting, to us it's new. Um, she does recommend Spin Cycle Yarns, Dyed in the Wool, Magpie Fibers, Domestic Fingering. Uh, both are used in this pattern, and the colorway suggested is navy, and Spin Cycle Dyed in the Wool, Cold Comfort. So I think it's only two. But anyway, you could always watch your podcast and ask questions about this, um, this design if you would like to. Um, but once again, um, if you go to her website, I think she has a lot more information for you there as well. So I'll pop back in here uh, on this slide. Um, so it's Andrea Mowry, I'll spin and knit if I want to. She doesn't always put descriptions in her titles. She usually just uses an episode number. Um, so if you, you know, search for the name, the stone crop sweater, you're going to see a lot of different podcasters who are talking about it and who have knitted it. You may not necessarily find this episode. So it is, but if you put in episode 46, Andrea Mowry, you will get to it. As you can see, she has over 60,000 subscribers. She has almost 5 million views on YouTube. And um, again, with that Q&A on Fridays, um, she, it would be maybe really helpful for you to check this one out if you haven't already. If you are an Andrea Maori podcast fan and you know more about this design, please uh, put something in the comments or please make a comment to help your fellow knitters. In fact, there is a contest that I'll tell you about at the end of this episode. Because um, again, just like, uh, you know, it's the knitting community. And I don't think that's just, um, you know, saying, uh, using community as a term. I think there truly is a knitting community. Um, uh, podcasters help each other, knitters help each other, crocheters help each other, yarn dyers help each other. Um, so again, I hope you will comment if you can enlighten fellow viewers a little bit more about Andrea Maori. So let's move on. Well, sort of move on. We're still on the stone crop sweater here because there is a there was a, a knit along that Alpaca Direct sponsored. Um, this goes back a ways, but the two videos are still there. There's parts one and two where Kelly, she and her husband Jim own Alpaca Direct. This is an Alpaca ranch in Idaho, the western United States. And um, she did this cal, and she did two episodes just on the stone crop pullover. Also, when you go on Ravelry, you're going to see the stone crop pullover in a lot of different colors. I believe that Kelly did it in a burgundy, and it was pretty. But you know, there's something about these designers. I really, I don't know. I think it's safer to go with their colorway on many of these designs because they always look beautiful. It's obviously a little bit more risky uh, to do your own colorway. Sometimes it's better, sometimes it's not. But anyway, so a pack of direct, uh, just search for Stone Crop Pullover by Andrea Maori, Tips from Technique Tuesday, parts one and two. And again, that is Alpaca Direct. They're another very well-established uh, podcaster here on YouTube. Next up is Mel. And I have watched all of Mel's videos. I am not anywhere near the uh, capability or accomplishment uh, that Mel is, is at with her knitting. She is a very talented knitter. And the name of her podcast is Mel Makes Stuff. And she and her husband live in central Massachusetts. I loved one of her podcasts where she dragged her husband to uh, Rhinebeck, Rhinebeck, New York, where they have the annual gigantic yarn festival, fiber festival, I think that's what they call it. He was a good sport about it. He actually enjoyed it. But um, Mel's videos are really fabulous. 
The one I'm featuring here is where the finished object is the VAIR, V-A-I-R, pullover by the Shetland designer, Gudrun Johnston. Um, this is Mel's favorite sweater by Gudrun Johnston, and it is a Fair Isle knit. And it was featured on the cover of the Shetland Trader. And I've just learned about the Shetland Trader a little bit. Evidently, the Shetland Trader is a family business of the Johnston family. I don't know if she, her mom started it or her grandmother. Um, if you could help with that information, that would be great. I got the feeling that her mom started it in the 70s. And this is a um, magazine that comes out with patterns and, of course, Gudrun Johnston has her patterns in the Shetland Trader, and that is the Vair on the cover. There is Mel in the lower left-hand corner modeling her finished object, and um, she is so amazing, and it, I will tell you why I absolutely watch all of her, all of her episodes. This is why. It's because she is so detailed about the fit. She is so detailed about the finishing, about the blocking. She is really a perfectionist and sometimes she kind of beats herself up for being a perfectionist, but you know, it, it inspires me. I was working on a little top for myself um, just yesterday and I was tempted to kind of let, you know, a little error go, go by, but, um, you know, I didn't. Uh, she makes a good point. If you're going to do it, do it right and take the time to fit. And I kind of think that's a common thread among all of the really advanced knitters and podcasters. They really do take the time to make it right. Her camera work is exceptional. Here are some more um, images of the detail that she goes into uh, and it's kind of cute in this episode. I remember now that she thanked Gudrun for the clear instructions and the accuracy of the pattern. Um, evidently, of course, I've never knit anything by Gudrun Johnston. It would be way beyond my, my capability, but um, evidently her patterns are excellent. And even though Mel always customizes the fit, she really appreciated the pattern in this case and said she made no major modifications. Here's the pattern information. It's the Vair by Gudrun Johnston. You can find it in the Shetland Trader Book 3 Heritage is the name of the um, version, the publication version. It's also available on Ravelry. And um, it's on Ravelry, you'll see that the sample knitters did many many different colorways uh, with this pattern. I you know made some changes to the design but in general um, it's a beautiful fair isle knit and um, way beyond my capabilities but someday I just got to keep watching those videos. Okay so here is the episode information um, and it's really interesting. Episode 12 is where she spends a lot of time um, with the first try-on. So live staking, first try-on. I don't know if she has an episode 13 in the middle, but you, would, you could check that one out easily enough. But then episode 14 is the one that I was showing the screenshots from. Um, and once again, it's Mel Makes Stuff. She has, looks like she's getting towards 6,000 subscribers and definitely very well deserved because of the quality that she puts into her podcasts. Um, and she's had 176,000 views or more since I filmed this video. So again, Mel makes stuff. I have to confess that I am most excited about this podcaster. This is Samantha Swami. I think it's Swami, Swami, it's probably Swami. And she calls herself the Strikachik. I looked it up. Strika is knitting 
in Danish and probably many of the other Norwegian uh, languages. Uh, and chick is chick, I think we know what that is. But um, she is a designer and on her very first podcast, she is amazing. She's such a, so personable. And look at the design of this sweater. This is her own design. And what's really cute is she lives in the Arctic Circle of Norway. So she's a very, very interesting girl. And um, I think the cabling on this sweater is absolutely beautiful. And I did run across a tutorial on cabling, and I'm planning to do a whole episode on cabled knits and um, find some really good uh, tutorials on cabling as well to help people out. But anyway, this is the Stricka Chick, and she is a brand new podcaster. So this is cute. Is she in the very first episode? She takes the time to tell you about her home um way up north in norway's arctic circle she did go into why she's there must be for work i don't know if she's a i, I can't recall now if she's a doctor maybe i'm not quite sure i'm guessing totally but um anybody who knows more about her please put something in the comments i only watched two of her episodes so far far the first one and the second one second one was just as amazing as the first um, but she said she chose this colorway because it's so dark up there. There's so little light that she needed something to remind her of the sun. And the sweater obviously does that. I think the um, profile of the sweater is so pretty. And she's a pretty girl anyway, so she makes a good model. So Samantha talks about the yarn she used. Uh, it was Drops Soft Tweed and Lemon Pie held with Drops Kids Silk and Vanilla. I think an excellent choice. She buys her yarn at Garn Studio. And I think in her second podcast, she was talking about, a, she was planning a trip home to the States. I think she was from Washington, D.C. She was going home to see her parents and she was planning on buying a lot of yarn when she got back to the U.S. So. We'll learn more if you start following her on a regular basis. She's um, she's pretty willing to share a lot of details about uh, what she does and what life is like in the Arctic Circle for a knitter. Here is the um, pattern information. Once again, it's the Sal Dog Sweater by Samantha Swarmy. You can find her on Ravelry as the Stricka Chick. I think if you put her name in, you'll get to the pattern as well. Um, again, it's a pullover. It's a brand new pattern. It was just published in April of 2022. Um, again, she goes over the yarn, the needle sizes, all that good stuff, the typical things that you would expect. But um, I'd say it's a quite a sophisticated pattern. Very, very beautiful. So here's how to get to the Stricka Chick. The Stricka Chick uh, podcast, episode one, knitting design, inspiration, and life in the Arctic. <laughs> Stricka Chick podcast. Uh, she has over a thousand subscribers, which is pretty impressive. She just posted her first video in June of 2022, and she's had over 12,000 views. So that's pretty good. She also has a blog uh, if you go online to thestrickachick.com, um, you can probably see, in fact, I know you will see more of her patterns because I did go and take a peek at that. So anyway, that is a newbie podcaster. Next up is a very well-established podcaster, and she calls her podcast Knitting I Love. This is Barbara Naluko and she hosts the podcast from Ireland. She has a lovely way of speaking, and she is also a knitwear designer. Um, in many, many of her episodes, she features test knits and fun knits by fellow designers. Um, she talks a lot about you know other designers in the business, which is kind of interesting. I love hearing the inside scoop. And in this episode, this is such a beautiful sweater. It's so elegant. 
This is the Isbra sweater, I-S-B-R-E sweater by, I want to say Ellie, Ellie. And Ellie is the designer behind Skein Deer Knits. I'm sure you've, you've probably heard the, the name Skein Deer Knits if you haven't. Um, it is a very well-established knitwear design company. And I believe they also have their own line of yarn. Um, Correct me on that if I'm wrong, but I think that's what I remember. And Ellie is the daughter, it's a family business and she is the daughter of the owner. So this episode by Barbara Naluco is not a tutorial, but she goes into great detail about this sweater. It's a finished object in this episode and she just keeps saying how much she loves the pattern and it is so pretty on her. It's so elegant. I think it'd be awesome for a young person. I have a niece who was visiting and I showed her um, this design and she just fell in love with it. So it's very, very pretty. What I like about um, the Knitting I Love episodes, and I've watched many of them, is that she labels everything so well in her, you know, she goes back in and must edit her videos and she puts in her needle sizes, um, all of the information on the yarn. She's very detailed and very, very helpful. Um, she said that she was spot on in matching her swatch to the pattern gauge, that it was not perfect, but it was close enough because the fit is perfect. Um, I personally love the colorway that she chose. I probably never would have chosen something as subtle as this, um, but I think it's very pretty. I think I remember her saying that she she blocked it twice to get the yarn to bloom and the fit to be perfect, and it looks like it is perfect, and it's kind of cute. She has pictures of the first blocking, of the second blocking, how long she soaked it, she gives you a lot of information, which is why we watch these videos. Here's the pattern. Once again, it's the ISBRE, I-S-B-R-E. This isn't the pattern, this is just the information. I-S-B-R-E, ISBRE, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, by Skandir Knits. Um, I don't try to, oh, it was published in November, 2018. So I'll bet you many of you have already knit the sweater you probably have the real scoop on it, so share if you can. Um, it's fingering weight yarn. Uh, I won't go into much more detail than that. If you are interested, I will tell you how to get to this episode. And here it is, you can get right to this episode. Now, this again is Knitting I Love, Isbra Sweater Pattern by Skein Deer Knits, Finished Object Knitting I Love finished object, pause, knitting I love. Um, I'm certain that a few episodes before this, she probably uh, cast it on and it was a whip. And I find, I like to try to find the whip episodes. I didn't on this one, but um, again, maybe you guys can help each other out if you know of an episode title. Cause again, she doesn't number her episodes a lot of times. But if you can look at the date, how long ago this episode was put up, you should be able to go backward and see two or three episodes prior to that when she was casting on and talking about the pattern. So um, once again, this is Knitting I Love. Uh, this has been a very successful podcast, uh, publishing since February 2015, almost 2 million views. Now, again, Barbara is a designer. The Knitting I Love designs are available on Ravelry. Um, if you search Knitting I Love or search her name, Barbara, I think it's Naluko. I wish I knew how to say her last name. If you search on that information, you then can see all of her designs. Again, the one she's featuring here is not her design. It's a Skein Deer knit design, but um, she's a very good designer. I did kind of check out her designs as well. So again, knitting I love. Next up is Lori, who knit the Throwover Pullover by Andrea Maury in seven days. This is a really cute episode. 
Lori is the host of Lunar Knits, and she did this test knit for Andrea Maori. And I love this episode because Lori is so excited about this pattern. As you can see, it's really, really pretty. There's a classic sense to it. In the uh, throwover photo that Andrea Maori is wearing, she did it, it looks like it's either in black or a very dark gray, I don't know for sure. Um, and Lori chose to do it in a dark green, which is a little bit more classic, but it's another absolutely beautiful Andrea Maori design. It has that, again, I'm not a fashion commentator. I'm not that knowledgeable about fashion, but I do know what I like. It does kind of have a cross between a modern look and a traditional Shetland Fair Isle look. Maybe just because it's a yoke, I don't know, but I think it's very pretty. There's excellent detailed information about this pattern. Lori is so cute because she put the sweater on in this episode, but it was still wet. <laughs> like she was like, she did it in seven days and it was still wet from um, the blocking. Um, but again, because it was a test knit, uh, I don't think she rushed it. She said that she really loved knitting it. You know how some things when you're working on them, you just can't put them down. She also said that this would be good not only for beginners, but for very beginner beginners, which kind of encourages me because I'm looking for my first color project. I mean, I do color blocks, obviously, and stripes and, you know, mixing it up that way. But I, I've never done this style of color work, and I'm ready to give it a try. So this might be a good one for me to get started on. So anyway, um, Laurie is so excited and she does such a good job of talking about the details. If you are interested in this pattern, this would be a good episode to watch. And as I said, she did go on and on with it um, in a good way, interesting. And she did use a scrap yarn for the blue and she said that it was a bit inconsistent. You know how like different weights of yarn um, in color work, even in the simple color work I do, can kind of throw off the pattern. But she said that the blocking took care of that problem. Um, and it, it must have because the, even the close-up uh, photograph is really, really excellent. It looks like she did a beautiful job and it looks like the fit is um, perfect. So here's Lori again in her excitement and here is the pattern information. Again it's the throw over by Andrea Maori. Um, you can get the pattern and more information in Drea Renee Knits. That's Andrea Maori's website. Relatively new, I mean, it was published in March of 2020. Um, and it looks like Andrea usually recommends the Spin Cycle yarns. Um, I don't know if that's her own brand or not. I'm not quite sure, could be. But anyway, um, there's the information and the pattern is available on the Andrea Maori website, website, Drea Renee Knits. Here's how. Here's how to get to this episode in particular, Lunar Knits by Lori, Lunar Knits podcast, episode 21. It only took seven days. That's cool. So um, there obviously is no whip because she did it so quickly. She just put it up on, did an episode right away when it was a finished object. Um, she did a yarn review. Uh, she used the Hudson and West Company Forge yarn. And uh, Lori has done quite a few yarn reviews, which can be really helpful. Um, so you could check that out as well. She has almost 10,000 subscribers, Lunar Knits by Lori. She has been on YouTube quite a while, since 2009, and has almost 650,000 views of her podcast. So that is Lunar Knits by Lori. Next up is the Knit Pearl Girl. This is Sophie. She lives in Cambridge in the UK. And Sophie is a knitwear designer. 
Uh, and of course, a super knitter. Um, I love her podcast. And this is a podcast that is so inspirational because in this one, it's almost like a little fashion show. She shows all of the knitwear designs that she has done and what she calls the, I'm going to say, ASTA designs, the ASTA line. It's A-O-S-T-A, -A, the Eugene, we learned when two vowels go walking, the first vowel does all the talking. So <clears throat> I'm going to say the Esta sweater um, in the chunky pullover design. That's the one I picked. There are quite a few designs that she is featuring in this episode, but I think this one um, looks easy and quick to knit. And I absolutely love the color. It's so perfect. And of course, um, I am recording this in September. So I am all about comfy sweaters at this point in time. Now, when I learned about this um, line, this design group that she's done, she has a cardigan, she has um, the same sweater in different weights of yarn with slightly different styling, um, that she designed this in what's called the Andalusian knit stitch pattern. And I Googled it to find out what is that. And it's, it's a four row repeat pattern that creates a little bit of texture and visual interest on a swath of stockinette. So I thought that was interesting. I would have to actually try that out to really understand what that means. But uh, the yarn used in the chunky sweater that she's featuring is the Crazy Sexy Wool by Wool and the Gang or Sirdar Adventure that I'm not familiar with, but Wool and the Gang I've heard many, many times, although I've never purchased their yarn. Um, so again, it's a series of jumpers, cardigans, and a vest in different weights. Uh, and the common thread, no pun intended, is the Andalusian stitch pattern. Here is the uh, pattern information, the Knit Pearl Girl. Uh, again, she's a designer, and that is also the name of her podcast. It is the Asta Sweater Chunky Edition. And uh, all of the details are there, but um, you won't have any trouble finding her on Ravelry. So here's the episode information. The name of the episode is Trying on All My Sweater Designs, The Knit Pearl Girl. This was from February 15, 2021. So obviously these uh, patterns have been released for quite a while. In this episode, she is also wearing the Color Burst sweater, which is really, really pretty. And uh, it was being test knitted in uh, February 2021. So I'm sure it's available if you did want to check that one out. Um, so again, she has been uh, podcasting since 2020, over 83,000 views, and she's also on Ravelry and at the knitpearlgirl.com. So you'll have to use those hyphens to get to her website. But I, it's kind of fun to go to designer websites because um, I think it helps them out you know, just to support them on their own websites. I don't know what the deal is with Ravelry, but uh, also you can easily see all their latest information and um, maybe a lot more information. I don't know. Anyway, I like to go to the websites. And finally, last the last of our featured finished object uh, episodes is Caroline's Knits. And Caroline is so much fun. Caroline is a knitwear designer. She is an amazing knitter. And um, she and her dog, Fela, are inseparable. <laughs> I love Fela. That there's a picture of her uh, that she posted on Instagram with Fela with this little paw on her hand. Um, but um, Caroline is a lot of fun. She was married. Uh, recently, I think in 2022, I'm not sure, 
but what the sweater that she's featuring is the fern sweater f-e-r-n sweater and that is by knitting with olive and i never know if it's knitting with olive or knitting for olive i get them confused but anyway um caroline does many many test knits uh, she has favorite designers she being a designer um, she hobnobs a lot with her friends and they try out each other's patterns. I think she mentioned in this episode that she was supposed to knit the sweater in gray, but it was November, it was right around Christmas, and she wanted a Christmas sweater, so she knitted in deep red. And it's very pretty in red, I think, and I think it's a good color for her. Like most of the designers, she is so well versed in all of the details not only of design but in technique and she goes into quite a bit of detail about this pattern and how she did it she said she had no issues uh, she loved the ribbing on the cuffs um, but she did say that if you want a sweater to look special you need to do color changes or color patterns, or you need lace, or you need cabling. I think this one is really elegant. Um, and it has, you know, with the vertical lace work on it, and it's very simple lace work, but um, she's a designer, so, you know, she's obviously has an opinion, but she did love this design. Here's the pattern overview. This is really filled with detail. I did not get this from Ravelry. I got it from the Knitting with Olive website and they use a different format for their pattern overview. Um, it is not the pattern itself, but it is kind of just a general information about the pattern. Um, it does come in a number of sizes, as you can see. And uh, of course they're recommending the Knitting for Olive Merino and cotton merino or pure silk. So some choices there of their own brands. Here's how to get to the episode where Caroline is talking about the um, finished object. And that is episode 11. So it's Caroline's Knits episode 11. She always uses these two forward slashes in her titles long time no see she had been I think she got married and I think that's why she was not around very much or she had a big lapse between her episodes but if you go to Caroline's Knits episode 6 slash slash knitting for olive darling wrap fern sweater and office sweater between episode six and episode 11, she talks a lot about the sweater and this pattern. So if you're into it and you really want to um, learn as much as you can about the fern sweater, um, but you know, even if it's not about the fern sweater, this is a really interesting episode or interesting podcaster. She is from the UK and she's just a lot of fun. So since December, 2020, she's had over 84,000 views and she is on Instagram and YouTube. I, I checked uh, Ravelry and I didn't see uh, Caroline come up, but easy to find on YouTube, obviously. So to finish up, I'm including one of the best tutorial podcasts on YouTube. This is obviously my opinion, but oh my goodness, I'm so happy I discovered Norman. Uh, Nimble needles was one of the originals uh that he goes way back has hundreds of videos uh all very high quality and it's hosted by a master knitter his name is norman and he lives in vienna austria his english is flawlessly perfect easy to understand and excellent camera work and he has a video an episode called Fair Isle Tips and Tricks. So if you've never done Fair Isle, and I'm one of those people, it's 
Very interesting. I watched several of these, and people keep saying it's not that complicated, and I think they're right. I think you just have to figure it out or see it demonstrated. Um, but uh, Norman is really excellent, and he has many, many videos on not only Fair Isle knitting and color work, but just about every aspect of uh, knitting that you could imagine. As I said, uh, he labels everything. You can go right to a part uh, that is interesting to you. If you aren't interested in stranded knitting, but you want to look at corrugated ribbings with color, you can go right to that. Very well organized information um, and excellent camera work. So you can really see what he's doing and just, you know, learn. He teaches a lot about chart reading too, um, which is Greek to me. Uh, I know it's supposed to make things simple, but I'm not a great pattern reader as it is. I've got a lot to learn. But anyway, to get to this particular episode, how to knit Fair Isle for beginners, and parenthetically, tips and tricks for neat results, uh, it's the Nimble Needles podcast. Uh, he has almost 80,000 subscribers on his first website. This is his original website. And then since um, he has almost 4 million views, uh, he started a second version of his podcast, which is really the same in, in terms of it's still uh, tutorials. But he's calling it Nimble Needles 2. And again, he already has 4,000 subscribers on that one, but I think it's just to break it up because he has so many videos um, since he started. And once again, as I said on, I think on the very first podcast slide, that if you click on his name, Nimble Needles, this one or this one, probably shouldn't use yellow, but maybe you can see that. Um, you will get to the channel information. You will be able to see all of the videos. You can go to the About tab and, you know, they don't usually have a lot of information there, but it, maybe there will be a little bit of information like websites and other places you can find Norman. Uh, and then again, when you knit on the title of the episode, that's what opens up the show notes which is really helpful because you can see the types of yarn used and um, other information that you may not have been able to catch um, during the episode. So again, Nimble Needles and Norma, very helpful. So I'm back and thank you again for tuning in and for checking out Patterns and Podcasts for Knitters. Uh, again, please use the comment section. I'm sure that there's so much more you can add in terms of some of these podcasters, some of the patterns, uh, information that may help others. I do read, you know, when I look at a podcast, I do read the comments and look for more information if I'm really interested in getting more information. Plus, I do like to hear the comments and most of them are so complimentary and so sweet and I think that uh, that's the very least we owe these uh, wonderful, talented knitters who are helping us keep our passion going uh, for knitting and crocheting and all things yarn. So um, once again, here are the podcasts that we featured in this episode. And I am going to do a comment giveaway. Uh, Obviously, the prize is going to be yarn, which is what we all know and love, but I am going to look at the comments and the comment that I think is the most helpful uh, to others, um, I think, you know, we'll, we'll pick that. I won't make the decision. My husband and my best friend, I'll leave it to them to do it. Um, and the prize is going to be yarn, but also, you know, I don't know if you have a premier premium version of YouTube. I have always had the premium version. I actually sacrifice the value of a half a skein of yarn a month to pay for my YouTube subscription. But I do love it because 
I can go ad-free uh, from one podcast to the next. I mean, I don't have anything against ads, but it saves so much time to go right to the podcast. And also, I have a library. I can keep track of all the videos I've watched. I can save particular videos that I want to view later. Um, I think it has a lot to offer. So anyway, I checked it out and they uh, Google, I don't work for Google or anything or YouTube, but I can buy a like a two month or three month, uh, I think two month subscription to YouTube for about the same value as the yarn. And it comes in the form of a gift card. So if you don't have YouTube premium, if you're interested in trying it out, definitely um, go for it and try to be a winner. So anyway, that is it. And once again, thank you for watching. Bye.